this video we're going to look at telescoping series. The telescoping series is very much like the last type of series we had, where it went from 1 to n, except for instead of going to n, we're going to infinity. So effectively, it's an infinite series. Okay, first thing we want to do in this example is we're going to look at uh, this piece here, this bit 1 over uh, brackets n 2n minus 1 upon uh, 2n plus 1. And we're going to change it using partial fractions, and hopefully that will give us a difference so then we can use our method of difference to get started so first of all just write that out 1 over 2n minus 1 upon 2n plus 1 is identically equal to a over 2n minus 1 plus b over 2n plus 1 and then all we're going to do is cross multiply so you multiply across by your denominator you're going to get 1 is identically equal to a upon 2n plus 1 plus b upon 2n minus 1. Okay, so that means when we sub in, sub in a value, and the value I'm going to put in is n is equal to 1 half, and a wee bit of working out, that is going to give me 1 is equal to a upon 2, which means, uh, therefore, your a is just equal to 1 half. Also, we're going to put in n is equal to minus a half, that's going to be 1 is equal to b upon minus 2. Therefore, that gives you b is equal to minus 1 half. Hence, we can say that 1 over, and it was 2n minus 1, 2n plus 1 is going to be equal to, and I'm just going to take a half outside, and a square bracket, I'm going to say 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. So you can see you've got the initial setup basically for our method of differences as we had done in our previous video. Okay, from now on then, we're just going to say, we'll just say let your ur, so this is your general term, I suppose, is equal to, and we're going to say a half upon... Uh, 1 over 2, um, 2r minus 1, minus 1 over 2r plus 1. And this is your general term. And what we're going to do is we're going to let uh, r equal 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, and look at what happens. So setting it this way makes it nice and easy uh, for us to see what's going on. So I can say u1, so that means when 1 is subbed into the thing, is going to be equal to a half upon, and it's going to be 1 over 1. So how I've got that is putting 1 into uh, on the denominator of 2 times 1 minus 1, and then minus 1 over 3. I'll do my u2. So that's going to be a half upon, and it's going to be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5. For good measure, I'm going to do u3 as well. u3 is going to be a half a pawn, and it's going to be 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7, and so on. And then I can see already what's going to start cancelling out. Uh, it'll cancel out on alternate lines. So I can just do dot, dot, dot. So I don't need to do the last three terms. I'll just do the last two terms so I can really clearly see what's going on. So I'm going to do my un minus 1 is a half a pawn. And it would be 1 over 2n minus 3, and then minus 1 over 2n minus 1. And my last term would be un is equal to a half a pawn, and it's going to be 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. Okay, all we're going to do now is we're going to add... So we're going to add here and see what we get. We just say adding. Adding gives. And the summation of these things, remember, that's where sigma is going to come in. So, uh, so, uh, sigma from r is equal to 1 of n of my ur is equal to. And when you add, let's just look back and see what happens when you add. Uh, you'll see what will cancel out. So... This minus a third, we cancel this with, with this third. This minus 1 over 5, we'll cancel this 1 over 5. Minus 1 over 7, we'll cancel with something here. This thing, we'll cancel with, uh, 
we'll, we'll cancel with this. And this term as well would cancel with something here. So you can see the way it's all going to cancel out, you're going to be left with a half a pawn, just 1 over 1, which we're just going to write as 1, minus 1 over 2n plus 1. And we'll go back up here and we'll say, hence, your limit, because what we're looking at, remember, the original thing was, where is it? The original thing was up here, it was up to infinity as opposed to up to n. So we have to look at the limit as n tends to infinity. So hence, your limit as n tends to infinity of our sigma er from r is equal to 1 to n is going to be a half a pawn. And let's look at this thing down here at the bottom. So we're looking at this. Imagine what happens to this bit of the term whenever n becomes a very large number. You're going to have 1 divided by a huge number. So this whole bit is basically going to go to 0. So if you don't believe me, put in 1 divided by 2 times a million plus 1. So then your calculator is going to be tiny. So if it got bigger and bigger and bigger to a billion, it's going to be smaller to a trillion, it's going to be smaller again, and so on and so on. So basically what you've got, your limit is going to be 1 minus 0. So your limit is going to be a half upon, uh, half upon 1 minus 0, which is just going to be a half. So we're just going to write that out the way they had written the original thing. Hence, from r is equal to 1 to infinity of whatever the original thing was, it was 2n minus 1 upon 2n plus 1 is going to be equal to 1 half. And that's us done, set out exactly as they want it. Next of all, we're going to look at the summation of finite series using a standard results. Now, we've got three results here. And just so we're aware for uh, CCA, Northern Ireland Board Examinations, uh, the first, sorry, the second and the third results are given to you on your formula booklet. Uh, so the first one isn't, but remember how we get from this one to this one is you square root. So the square root of a quarter gives you a half. The square root of n squared gives you n. The square root of n plus 1 all squared gives you n plus 1. So there's how you can relate to them. That was mentioned in a previous video as well. Uh, but these are the three standard results we're going to use to, the, to do the next uh, few questions. So the question says, find... Uh, Sigma from r is equal to 7 instead of 1. So from r is equal to 7 to 20 of r squared. And that's the first one we're going to look at. So we're just going to write that in again. So we're going to have to keep that on the screen. So we've got your a. And is sigma from r is equal to 7 of to 20 of r squared. Now, we have to use our standard results to do this. So we've got to piece this all together. So... What my standard result would allow me to do, it would allow me quite easily to go from 1 to 20 of r squared. Uh, but clearly, I've got more terms here on the right-hand side than I do on the left-hand side. So what I need to do is actually take away sigma from r is equal to 1 up to r, is equal to r, r squared of r is equal to 6. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So if you just fire... Uh, 20 into the first, so this is going into this identity here. This is what we're using. We're putting 20 into this, and then we're putting 6 into this. So it's going to be 1 over 6 upon, and it was n. So the first term in this case is 20. Then it was n plus 1, so it's going to be 21. Then it was 2n plus 1, so it's going to be uh, 41. And then putting 6 in, it's going to be 1 over 6 times my n, which is 6, times my n plus 1, which is 7, times my 2n plus 1, which would be 13. And then it is just calculator exercise from here on in. And if you do that, you can see you get 2,870 for the first one, 91 for the second, then subtract, you'll get uh, 2,779. Okay, the next one they asked us to do was sigma of r equals 12 to r equals 25 of r cubed. So we'll just write that one down again. So part b, 
sigma r is equal to 12 to 20, 25, I think it was, sorry, of r cubed. So let's just zoom up here and see what the r cubed one looks like. And here it is, this one here. It's one quarter upon n squared upon m plus one squared. So that's what we're going to use here. And again, that's in your formula booklet for you to use, thankfully. So uh, to do this, we're going to have to do sigma from r is equal to 1 to 25 of r cubed minus sigma from r is equal to 1 uh, to 11 of r cubed. And then we're just going to put those in. So it's 1 quarter times 25 squared times, that was your n squared, and m plus 1 would be 26. 26 squared minus 1 quarter times 11 squared times 12 squared, and then that's going to be 105625 minus 4356, and then that's going to be work out to be 101. Two six nine, and that's it. Next example is a show that example. So you've got um, a summation on the left hand side, and you just show what it is. It is algebraically equal to one third upon m upon m plus one m plus two. So we're going to look at the left hand side and for a solution, and we're going to change how it looks. So we've got sigma from r is equal to one to m of r upon r plus 1. And all I'm doing here is multiplying out. If you multiply out those brackets, you'll have r squared plus r. So that really is sigma of r squared plus r, and that's from r is equal to 1 to m. And remember, you could write that as sigma of r squared plus sigma of r. So you can split it up much like an integration. If you add the integral of x squared plus x dx, you could write that as the integral of x squared dx plus the integral of x dx. So the same sort of idea. So that's really what we're going to do. So we'll get rid of all of that. And we will just put on what's important. So the first one, from r is equal to 1 to n of r squared, using the identities we have just been given, or the results we've just been given earlier on, uh, that's going to be 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1, times 2n plus 1, and then plus 1 half times n upon n plus 1. That is your sigma of r. So now what we want to do is factorize. So we're going to pull out 1 sixth. We're also going to pull out n, because it's common in both, and we're going to pull out n plus 1. And then inside the bracket, you just need to think what I need to multiply 1 sixth n upon n plus 1 by to give me these things. So to get my first term, it's already got the 1 sixth. It's got the n, it's got the n plus 1. So I just need to multiply by 2n plus 1. We'll add that in, 2n plus 1. And to get my next term, I've already got my n. I've already got my n plus 1, but I need to get my sixth, 1 sixth up to be 1 half. So you need to multiply 1 sixth by 3. So all we need to add in here is 3. So we'll tidy that up. That's going to be 1 sixth times n times n plus 1. And if you multiply or tidy that up, sorry, you're going to have 2n plus 4. And then what you can do is this bracket here, you could pull out a 2. I'll do this in two steps just so we can clearly see. So a 2 comes out. So a 2 is now come out. So you have 2 over 6n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And 2 over 6, we know and love as 1 third n, n plus 1, n plus 2. And that is what they wanted. So it is proved. This is the last example of this video, and it says find the following in terms of n. So we've got uh, sigma from r is equal to 1 to n of 6r squared. That is going to be no problem to us using the standard result. But then we have a plus 2 to the power of r, which is going to be a wee bit trickier. Okay, we're going to split it up. And we're going to say that sigma from r is equal to 1 to n of 6r squared r squared plus 2 to the power of r is equal to sigma of 6r squared from n is equal to n is, r is equal to 1 to uh, up to r is equal to n, then plus sigma from r is equal to 1 up to n of 2 to the power of r.
And I'm going to change this one more time. And again, much like your integration, if you had 6x cubed, the integral of 6x cubed, you could have just write that as 6 times the integral of x cubed dx. So basically, all the rules of integra integrals and so on that you've seen before apply to the sigma notation as well. So that means I can just pull a 6 outside. So 6 times sigma r squared from r is equal to 1 to n. And we have that what we know what this uh, is equal to. And then plus our sigma of 2 to the power of r from r is equal to 1 up to n. Dot, dot, dot. Call that equation 1. We will come back to that. We're going to look at that in its two parts and then come back to it. Okay, so first of all, we've got our 6 sigma of r is equal to 1 to n of r squared, and that would be 6 times, and the standard result was 6 upon n upon n plus 1 upon 2n plus 1, which is equal to n upon n plus 1. 2n plus 1. Okay, next bit then, we're going to look at our sigma from 1 to n of 2 to the power of r. I'm going to, we're going to write it a long way and see if we can find any um, anything that we know from before. So we write that out. The first one is going to be 2 to the power of 1. Next one is going to be 2 to the power of 2. Next one is going to be 2 to the power of 3. All the way up to 2 to the power of n. Now, I would be adding this to your notes, but this is just for me to explain it. Think, how do I get from this term to this term and so on? Is I multiply by 2. So this is actually a geometric progression, where your first term is a, your second term is ar, your next term is ar squared, and so on. So it's a geometric progression, or you may be familiar with it being called a gp. So and it is a sum of the first n terms. So first of all, we'll make we note, say this is a GP, geometric progression, with A, which is your first term, is 2, and your R is equal to 2, and your N is equal to your is equal to N. So we don't really know what it is, in fact, but it is N. So your sum of your first n terms is, remember that is equal to a upon r to the power of n minus 1 all over r minus 1. So in this case, it is 2 times 2 to the power of n minus 1, and that's all over 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So we can go back up here and say, Hence, equation 1 becomes, we'd already worked out the six, 6 times the sigma of r squared was equal to n upon n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, and then plus 2 upon 2 to the power of n minus 1. And that is as good as we can go.